Hello again. Uh, in this show me, uh, we're going to do hernias as promised. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to start by making this nice and big and drawing a inguinal ligament like we did before. But this time we're going to take up all the screen. So remember that our AS by S is up here. That's our anterior superior iliac spine. Down here is our pubic tubicle. Okay, so now we're going to draw on our inguinal canal. Remember it's a four centimetre long tube with a deep inguinal ring. We find the deep inguinal ring roughly approximately midway between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle. So I'm going to go roughly for this region in here. So I'll draw it nice and big coming down here. And so we have our deep inguinal ring. And this is our superficial inguinal ring. And I'm going to label that, but then quickly remove it because we're going to need some space to draw some other structures. So, just for orientation here to understand how hernias work, and there's two types of hernia that I'm sure you've heard of. There's indirect inguinal hernias and direct inguinal hernias. And we're going to start by drawing on some structures in, in, in terms of the anatomy that will help us understand the difference between the two. So, first of all, I'm going to draw on the femoral vessels. So I'm going to start by drawing on the artery, which is going to be coming down here like that and also the vein, like that. so we're just going to colour those in the correct colours so that we know which is which, so that's going to be nice and blue, up there and we'll just make this one red. So we've got our femoral vessels, so the femoral artery and the femoral vein which were of course the external iliac vessels, vein and artery. We've got a neurovascular bundle here so what we really need to draw on also is the nerve which will be roughly in this position. We'll draw that on a bit smaller and give that a nerve-like colour. And I guess we can also kind of draw on the relationship here with the iliacus muscle so this would be iliacus there. So we can see the femoral vessels coming deep to the inguinal ligament and entering into the femoral triangle. Now a key landmark here, and the reason why we've drawn on these vessels, a key landmark is in fact the inferior epigastric arteries and veins or inferior epigastric vessels. And they're small vessels that come from the external iliac and they would roughly run in this position in here. So let's just try and draw them on. And they would run like this. And let's just draw the continuity of those as well with the correct colours. Because this really is a key landmark for hernias. And normally hernias are categorized in terms of type during the actual surgical procedure in relation to the inferior epigastric vessels. So here we've got, this would be the inferior epigastric artery and this would be the inferior epigastric vein. Okay, so now we've got our anatomy in place, we can start to think about hernias in a bit more detail. So what is a hernia? Well, a hernia is a protrusion uh, or passage of part of uh, the peritoneal sac and, and there's different types of hernia, but obviously we're talking about inguinal hernias here. So the protrusion or the passage of the peritoneal sac with or without abdominal contents um, is through a weakened part of the abdominal wall and in this case in the groin and it occurs because the peritoneal sac enters the inguinal canal either indirectly so we have 
indirect. So let's just pop this in the corner down here. So indirectly through the deep inguinal ring. So we'll put DIR there. Or they occur directly. And this is through the posterior wall of the inguinal canal. So this is directly through a weakened area in the abdominal musculature. So we can put here that this would be through posterior wall. And really the posterior wall, if you remember, of the inguinal canal is actually transversalis fascia, which I mentioned before. So the peritoneal sac would go through a weakened area of that transversalis fascia. So let's start by talking about an indirect hernia. They are by far the most common of the two types of inguinal hernias. And this type of hernia, in fact both types of hernia, tend to be more common in men than in women. And in this case it tends to occur because of an embryological problem. So you might remember in a previous tutorial me talking about the processus vaginalis, which is the path that's created for the gubernaculum to pull the gonads into the adult position. And if the processus vaginalis remains open or patent, then we sometimes get a congenital type of hernia where part of the abdomen can pass through the deep inguinal ring. So we're going to go through here. So part of the bowel, and I apologize for using the same color as I'm using for the nerves, but I'm sure you understand. Um, it shouldn't get too confusing. Kind of limited with the choice of colors here, unfortunately. So we're going to get movement of the bowel in this direction through the deep inguinal ring. And that bowel can actually protrude as a hernial sac through the superficial inguinal ring. So the, the hernia is indirect because the space, the deep inguinal ring, the opening, allows for the protrusion, the peritoneal sac, with or without peritoneal contents or without abdominal contents, which obviously would complicate things because that would mean that part of the bowel could become strangulated if, uh, if it's contained within the sac can travel through the entire four centimeter long tube of the inguinal canal and if it's bad enough end up inside the scrotum it can actually travel down as far as the scrotum and of course this would be contained as well inside the spermatic cord so that's our indirect hernia and notice the relationship up here is that it's lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels. So an indirect hernia goes through the deep inguinal ring, is lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels and can take a, a, a route that means that the sac, the, the, uh, the actual herniated sac can protrude through the superficial inguinal ring. So a direct hernia is a different type of hernia that's not congenital in origin and it tends to occur in elderly men and it occurs because there is a weakness in the abdominal musculature and this weakness can be caused by a number of factors but more often than not it can be obesity or prolonged constipation, often it's related to uh, chronic lung diseases that regularly mean an increase in uh, raised abdominal pressure. It can also occur for those people that may have had uh, jobs or professions that involve heavy lifting on a regular basis or even bodybuilders. So that's how it would happen. They tend to occur, so if we draw on, let's draw on the position of our peritoneal sac just coming down here. So this line represents our parietal peritoneum and just inferior to that we're going to have our extra peritoneal fascia which I mentioned in a previous tutorial 
and our transverse Arles fascia is going to run in here as well. So this depression of the direct hernia will occur medial to the inferior epigastric vessels, the artery and the vein, and may push its way through the transversalis fascia and make its way into the inguinal canal through a weakness here. And it too may protrude and exit from the superficial inguinal ring, but it does not go through the deep inguinal ring. So let's just draw on our sac here that represents the direct hernia. So this is direct. And this one was our indirect. So we must remember that this type of hernia, the direct hernia, does not travel through the entire length of the inguinal canal, but can penetrate through part of a weakened wall and enter into it halfway along its path. And, but both of them can still protrude, both the direct and indirect hernias can still both protrude through the superficial inguinal ring. With the direct hernia, the peritoneal sac can acquire a layer of the external spermatic fascia, but that's about all. Unlike in the indirect hernia where, because it's congenital in origin, it acquires all of the layers of the spermatic cord as well and therefore is entirely contained within the three layers of the spermatic cord. Okay, that's a brief overview of inguinal hernias. Okay, see you soon.